Good morning, first graders. It's Ms. Rhodes with today's math lesson. Before we get started, you'll need to get everything you need. As always, you'll need your math book and a pencil with an eraser. Today, you'll also need to get your 10 frame. Your teacher sent one home in the supplies your mom brought home at the beginning of the year. You'll also need a red and yellow crayon and your bag of two color counters. Stop the video now to get those supplies. Now that we're back to work, turn in your math book <clears throat> to the next lesson. It's lesson 3.8 on page 173. It looks like this with a big tin frame on it. You worked on tin frames in kindergarten and already this year in first grade. You might have been doing frame flash at, as practice at home this fall. That's when your parents showed you a tin frame and took it away and you had to think Oh, I remember how many are filled in. Top row and one more is six. Six are filled in, four are empty. <clears throat> or, oh, that's a group of eight with two empty. It takes eight and two more to fill my 10 frame. We're gonna be using those skills to do our math today. I'll introduce it by, solve, by filling in this 10 frame. You remember how to fill in a 10 frame. You've been doing it since kindergarten. You always fill it in from left to right, top to bottom, putting one counter in each square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. To fill your ten frame, you fill in the top row, then the bottom row. One counter goes in each square. You can never put two counters in one, more than one counter in one square. If you had extras, they'd just be on the bottom. Now let's see how to do this strategy. Today's problem on this page is to add 9 plus 6. 9 plus 6 is certainly not a math fact you did in kindergarten, and we haven't done one like it in first grade yet either. You probably don't know the sum or the answer to 9 plus 6. But to solve it, we're going to use our 10 frame. I'll start out by figuring out the biggest add-in. Which number is larger? That would be the 9. 9 is larger, so I'm going to put 9 counters in my 10 frame. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I put the 9 in my 10 frame because 9 is the larger counter. Now I have to add my 6 extra. I'll put those on the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have to add 9 plus 6, 9 in the 10 frame, and 6 on the bottom. I don't know what 9 plus 6 is, but I want to make 10 and add the extra. To make 10, I'll take my last counter on the bottom and fill in my 10 frame. Making 10 means filling in your 10 frame. I filled in the 10 frame. Now this looks like a different addition problem that I do know how to solve. Now I have a new problem. I have a 10, a filled in 10 frame, plus my other add-in is 5. The 10 plus 5 means a filled 10 frame, plus I now have 5 on the bottom. I know 10 plus 5. We worked on that a few days ago. 10 plus 5 is 15. If 10 plus 5 is 15, 9 plus 6 is also 15. Because I didn't add or subtract any counters, I just took my 9 plus 6, moved a counter up to fill the 10 frame, and made a new problem, 10 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do you see how this strategy works? It takes a little thinking, but you'll get it. You might want to do this lesson slowly and in parts, because there's a lot of steps to remember and a lot of different ways to do it, too. Now. I'll take my counters off and turn to the next page. On the next page, we'll be using the same strategy, and they're kind of showing us how to draw it. But first, I'm going to want to use my 10 frame to solve it. This problem says we're adding 4 plus 8. And it says put 8 red counters in a 10 frame and then show the 4. I'm going to write down the problem I'm doing, 4 plus 8. 
and I'm going you should get your tin frame out and fill it in just like we did on the other page. I'm going to put a group of eight counters in my tin frame. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Even though the eight is the add-in on the bottom, it's the largest number, so that's how many I put in my tin frame. You should do that too. Now I'm adding four more. I'll put those on the bottom. That's my other add-in, the other number I'm adding. So to add four plus eight, I put four on the bottom and eight in my tin frame. I don't know the answer to four plus eight, but I know I can make a ten. Can you see how many counters to move up? Yep, take your last two of the four and fill in your tin frame. Now you have a new fact. Now we've made the fact a filled tin frame, which is 10, plus instead of four on the bottom, I move two up, so now I only have two counters on the outside. I changed 4 plus 8 to 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2 is 12, so 4 plus 8 is 12, because it's the same counters, the same number. In your math book, they drew that. They used their counters, then they drew to show how it looks different when you move the two yellow counters to fill in the 10 frame, and they wrote the new fact. That's what we'll be doing on this page. Let's take the next tip problem. So empty out your tin frame and get all ready to do a new problem. We're adding 9 plus 5. So on your tin frame, use your red and yellow counters. How many will you put in your tin frame? The larger add-in, the bigger number, is the 9. So I'm going to need to get 9 counters to fill in my tin frame. Let me do that now. And I don't even need to count to fill in the top row. I know the top is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now to fill in 6, 7, 8, 9. So to solve 9 plus 5, I put 9 counters in the tin frame. And how will I show the 5? With 5 counters on the bottom. They cannot go in the tin frame yet, so my two add-ins, the two numbers I'm adding together, are 9 and 5. I want to make 10. Can you see how to do it? You do it with your counters. Good. You should have moved one of the yellow up to fill the tin frame to make a new fact. Now's the tricky part. Now they want me to write the new fact and show it on my paper. So on your problem here, you're going to want to color in your circles to show what you're showing on your tin frame. You have ten, ten filled. You have nine red and one yellow to fill in your tin frame. So I'm going to have to draw nine red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine circles to show my nine red counters to match my tin frame. And then I need one yellow counter inside the tin frame and only four on the outside now. I took this counter and moved it up. That last one of the five got moved into the tin frame. So my nine plus five looks different now. It's a group of nine red and one, two, three, four, five yellow, but one of the yellow is in the tin frame. So now we have a new fact. What fact does this look like? Now it looks like a group of ten, a filled tin frame, plus four on the bottom. I know ten plus four is fourteen without having to count. If ten plus four is fourteen, then nine plus five is the same thing because we are using the same number of counters. We just moved one from outside the tin frame to inside. So on your paper, your paper should now show f filling in the tin frame with one of the yellow and only four yellow counters on the in outside. 
then write the fat. This shows a full 10 frame and 4 extra on the bottom to make 14. That's why this strategy is called make 10, add the extra. We filled in our 10 frame to make 10 and then see how many are left on the outside. We're going to do the same thing now with 4 plus 7. So you'll want to empty out your 10 frame and get ready for that problem. I'll write it on my paper, but you don't need to. We're adding 4 plus 7. Be thinking, how many counters will I want to put in the 10 frame? How do I decide? The bigger, the larger of the two add-ins. 7 is the larger add-in. So 7 will be how many I'll fill in my 10 frame. I will put, so you should do this with your counters in your 10 frame. I have a group of 5, 6, 7. 7 red counters in the 10 frame. I'm adding 4 more. I'll put those underneath. To add 4 plus 7, I just change the order of the add-ins. We know we can do that to make 7 in the 10 frame and 4 on the outside. But I want to make 10. I don't know 4 plus 7, but I can make 10 because I know those facts. What should I do to fill my 10 frame? I need to move three, my last three of these counters, to fill my 10 frame. So I'll just move up one, two, three to make a new fact. You should do that with your counters and then draw to show it on your math page. I had seven counters in my 10 frame, seven red, so I will fill in seven circles, and that matches what they started with on the paper, but I'm not going to draw four underneath because I filled my 10 frame. I moved my yellow counters to fill the 10 frame. I didn't have to move all the counters, I just had to fill the 10 frame. Seven needed one, two, three more, so I really moved three yellow counters. So I put three in the 10 frame, and only had one left on the outside. So your picture on your 10 frame matches when you move three yellow into the red. It should match what you did with your counters. Now the tricky part. This box is to write the new addition fact we made. This picture looks like 7 plus 4, a group of 7 red and a group of 4 yellow. This looks different. It's not a group of 7, it's now a group of 10. This whole filled 10 frame is one of my add-ins. How many do I have on the outside? One. That's my other add-in, the other number I'm adding. I know 10 plus 1 is 11. That's an easy, easy fact. If seven, 10 plus 1 is 11, then 4 plus 7 is also 11 because they are the same counters. Whether it's a group of 7 in the 10 frame and 4 on the outside or 10 in the 10 frame and 1 on the outside. Either way, it's the same number of counters. So the sum or answer is the same. Your paper should look like mine with 10 plus 1 written here and a filled 10 frame with 1 on the outside on the right. Now we'll do the same thing for 9 plus 8. So again, empty your counter, your 10 frame please. And this fact is 9 plus 8. I'll just write it over here to make it easier to see while I work. But you have it written right here. Go ahead. Fill your 10 frame with however many counters you can for one of the add-ins. It won't fill it all the way, will it? The larger add-in is 9, so put 9 counters in your 10 frame. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Some of you could do that one really fast. Now I have a huge other add-in to add. I'm adding eight. I'll need to put eight yellow counters on the outside. 
you do that too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine red counters to match the nine addend, it's the largest, and eight yellow counters to match the smaller addend. I don't know nine plus eight, but I see I can fill my ten frame pretty easily. Can you see what to do? Go ahead, fill your ten frame by moving one of the extra. Just take my last yellow one and put it up there. I now have a filled ten frame, so my new problem is a group of ten, a filled ten frame, and I don't have eight anymore on the outside. I took one away, so instead of eight, I only have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my new problem is a ten plus a seven. I know a ten and a seven is a group of ten and seven extra. So nine plus eight is also a group of ten and a seven extra or 17. We changed 9 plus 8 to a new problem, 10 plus 7. We made 10, filled the 10 frame, and added the extra, the counters that are outside the 10 frame. On your paper, in your math book, you'll do the same thing. We have 9 red ones. We'll always start by filling in our 10 frame picture with the number of red counters to show the larger add-in. Now my 8, I'm not going to draw 8 on the bottom like we have over here. I'm going to draw what I changed to on my 10 frame. I added a yellow there from my 8 and then only have 7 yellow on the outside. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the outside. I have 1 in there and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven on the outside. Now for the thinking part, look at that picture and write the addition fact that goes with that picture. Oh, that's a ten. And I can count and see that I have seven on the outside. Ten plus seven is seventeen. So now I'll go over here and write the same sum of seventeen. If ten plus seven is seventeen, 9 plus 8 is also 17. Because we didn't change the counters, we didn't add or subtract any counters, we just moved them. And moving them around does not change the total. Make sure page 174 is done to match my page. Because this is a new strategy and takes a few steps, you're going to want to look back on this page 174 when you do your homework. It will show you what to do. And if you're grown up, isn't sure what they want, they can turn back to this page. That's why we're doing so many problems together today, so that you and your grown-up helper can know how to do this new strategy. Now we'll turn to the next page. The top of page 175, it's 175 and has that little squirrely guy on it. The top of 175, we're doing the same thing we just did on the other page. We're adding 5 plus 8. They already drew what the counters will look like to start with. You know how to do this. You're going to get your red and yellow crayon. And they did 5 plus 8 with 8 in the 10 frame. So you can use your 10 frame and counters to fill it in if you like. Or today, I th on this one, I think I'll just do it without using my 10 frame. I know to put 8 over here. I do have to show what I did. So I have 8 in my 10 frame over here, matching the 8 over here, because that's the larger add-in. Now my 5, I'm not going to put on the bottom like they did. I'm ready to make my 10. So I'm going to move 2 of these counters. And I'll just mark them like that to show you. You don't need to do that. But those two counters are going to move to fill my 10 frame. That only leaves one, two, three yellow counters on the outside. So I have eight red ones, and I still have my one, two, three, four, five yellow ones, but two are on the inside of the 10 frame, 
and 3 on the outside. Then write the new fact. A filled 10 frame is 10 and count the outside. The other addend is the yellow left. That is 3. So 10 plus 3 I know is 13. A group of 10 and 3 extra. So 5 plus 8 is also 13. Your book should have the picture drawn, the new math fact, and be sure to put the sum on the, this math fact as well. The point of doing this math fact is to solve this one, so you'll want to be sure to put the add in there. The next problem, we're going to use the same skill to solve a word problem. It says, Andrew visited Cedar Hill State Park seven times. Kathy has visited the same park nine times. How many times did they both visit the park? I've got to think, first of all, about what's being presented in my problem. Let's see, Andrew went to a park seven times. Kathy went to the same park nine times. And it wants to know how many times did they both visit. Well, if we're looking for something that both, that means we're going to put the two together. So my problem, I think, will be to add the 7 and the 9. 7 for Andrew's visits to the park and 9 for Kathy's. To solve 7 plus 9, I can use my counters if I want, or I can just start by coloring it in. Larger add-in is 9, so I will draw 9 counters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, if you're doing it with your tin frame, you would have 7 on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Because they didn't give me two spaces to draw my counters, I'm going to do it in one step. Huh. I know I can fill my tin frame. So this time, I'm going to cross off that one off so everybody sees that I crossed it off because that counter is being moved. I'm moving it up here. Do you see that? I had my 7 on the outside, but I moved one of them to fill my 10 frame, so I crossed it off. I don't have 7 on the outside anymore, do I? I made a change. I made a 10. So my new problem now that I have, I changed that to be a group of 10. And I only, I don't have 7 on the outside. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 10 plus 6 I know is 16. So 7 plus 9 will also be 16. How many times did they both visit the park? 16 times. So I'll write my 16 there. You'll need to. Be sure it says draw to make a 10, so you'll need to draw the picture and write the sum. Write the answer to tell how many times they both visited the park. Now for the last problem. Oh, got that think smarter. That means it's going to take some extra thinking here to figure out what to do. In this page, it says what strategy would you choose to solve 7 plus 8? What strategy? So you need to be thinking strategy. What strategies do I know? It doesn't want you to just write the answer to this problem. It doesn't ask what is the sum, what is the answer. It says what strategy would you use? One strategy I know is counting on. Would I count on to add 7 plus 8? Let me think. Oh no. You count on if you're just adding 1, 2, or 3 to a number. These are both pretty large add-ins, pretty big numbers. I'm likely to get confused and miscount and come up with the wrong answer to try to count on 7 plus 8. It is true you could draw pictures, draw circles to solve, or you could use counters to solve, but it says use a strategy. And a strategy means not a tool like drawing or counters, a strategy means what's a way to think about the problem so you can solve it more easily in your head. So counting on is not a choice. I recognize that 7 and 8 are next door neighbor facts on the number line. 8 is just one more than 7. When two numbers are next door neighbors like that, right together on the number line, 
I could use a double. So I could say, I could think of my 8, instead of being an 8, to be a 7 and a 1. That would change my 7 plus 8 problem to 7 plus 7 plus 1. And I know 7 and 7 is 14. And I'll add one more to get 15. So 7 plus 8 would be 15. If I did this, then I would write double plus 1. And why did you use a double plus 1? Because the numbers were next door neighbors. I could think of a double. I could use 7 plus 7. That's explaining why. There's another strategy to use, like the strategy we just talked about now. Could I make a 10 using 7 plus 8? If I want to add 7 plus 8, is that a good problem to solve by making a 10? Yeah. I could put 8 in my 10 frame. If I put 8 in my 10 frame and 7 on the outside, oh, 8 would take 2 more of my 7 to make 10. And then instead of having 7 on the outside, I'd only have 5. So I could make a 10. I don't need to do this work over on my paper. It just says what strategy. So I could write, make a 10. And then I'd have to use words to say, why would I make a 10? Because I can fill the 10 frame with the 8 and add 2 of the 7. That would be explaining why making 10 would work here. So again, do not just write an answer. Do not just write an addition problem. You're going to say a strategy. And then you're going to say why you use that strategy. Okay? That's the end of page 175. Now the next page has us think about the strategy we just learned to make 10 add the extra in a totally different way. This is going to take some thinking. But you guys are so smart and you've been zipping along learning these strategies. I know you can do this. You'll need to listen carefully to this and be sure to write down what I do if your grown-up helper isn't right with you right now so they see how you solved it. This says 10 plus 8 has the same sum as 9 plus something. Now I've got to tell you, that's really tricky work. I would think this was like third grade work or fourth grade work. But you can do it by thinking about making 10. There's a 10 here, and you're really good at adding 10 to another number. So let's start with what we do know. It says 10 plus 8. Well, I know what 10 plus 8 is. 10 plus 8 is 18. So that'll help me get started if I just write the sum of 10 plus 8 up there. And I'm going to use my 10 frame to show 10 plus 8. It, now this will be easy to do. 10 just takes 10 red ones in the 10 frame. And then my 8 extra will be on the outside. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8. So I'm trying to show 10 plus 8, a group of 10 in the 10 frame and 8 on the outside. It wants to know 10 plus 8 has the same sum as 9 plus something. Well, I know this shows 18, but it wants to know 9 plus something. I don't have 9. I'm going to make 9. Ta-da! I changed my 10 to a 9. I can't just throw this counter into the bank. I have to think, wait, I'll put that there. Because it says it's the same sum. So I have to use the same total number of counters. So I'll take 10 plus 8. This time I'm doing the opposite and taking one out of the 10 frame. Now I have a group of 9 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 others. So I change 10 plus 8 to 9 plus 9. I use my 10 frame to show that. You might have known, oh, 10 plus 8 is 18. That's one of my doubles. That's 9 plus 9. If you knew it, that's great. If not, now you know how you can show it. Because on the next problem, that's what we'll have to do. The next problem says 10 plus 7 has the same sum as 8 plus something. Hmm. Well, 10 plus 7. The sum of that is 17, but
but I don't know what you add to 8 to get 17. I'll use my tin frame to figure it out. It's not a guessing game. It's not ask somebody. It's show how you would figure it out. So I'm going to have my group of 10 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on the outside. 10 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 matches this problem. I need to change it to be 8 plus something. Well, I'm not making 10. My 10's already filled in. I need to make it so the 10 frame has only 8. Well, I'll take the last 3 away. I'm sorry, the last 2 away. So now I have 5, 6, 7, 8. So now I have 8 in the 10 frame, and I'll count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 9 on the outside. So 10 plus 7 has the same sum, the same total number of counters, we didn't get rid of any, as 8 plus 8. I'm sorry, 8 plus 9. Let me say that again. 10, when we had 10 plus 7, it's the same as, I changed my 10 frame to just being 8, 8 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 8 plus 9. Do you see that? Do you see how it's related to what we did earlier? They're just showing you that you can fill and unfill a 10 frame. It helps you solve other problems. 10 plus 5. Okay, so let me get my 10 filled in there. This time we're adding 10 plus 5. I'll put 10 in my 10 frame and 5 on the outside. I know that made 15. But 10 plus 5 has the same sum, the same total number of counters as 6 plus something. I want to change this to a 6. So I'll take away some counters. So I only have 10, 6 in that group, 6 in the 10 frame. And I'll put the other, the ones I took off the count, off the 10 frame, down here. So now my 10 plus 5 became 6 in the 10 frame and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on the outside. Another answer of 9. If you want to, you can think about that. Why was it adding 9 every time? Hmm. 10 and 8 is 9 and 9. 10 plus 7 is the same as 8 plus 9. And 10 plus 5 is the same as 6 plus 9. That's a pattern we'll learn more about as the year goes on. Now this one takes some more thinking. It says you have the numbers 6 and 8 and 10. Those are the only numbers you can use to solve this problem. Blank plus blank has the same sum as blank plus 8. So one of my numbers is an 8. I'm going to put 8 in my 10 frame. If I put 8 in my 10 frame, because I know that's going to be one of my add-ins, it says these two add-ins have the same sum as 8 plus something. And now I'll just have to try some other numbers. What other numbers could I put in there? Well, I only have two choices. I'm either going to have 6 here, or I'm going to have a 10 here. Because it says the only numbers I can use are a 6 and an 8 and a 10. To go, it might be 6, 8, 10. It might be 8, 10, 6. It might be 10. I can put them in any order that works. Only one way will work. I have to figure out which way that is. So since I know 8 is one of the add-ins on this side, hmm, let me try adding an 8 and a 6. Because I have a 6 here, I could put a 6 there. So let me try 6 counters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to have to just check it out. 8 plus 6. Well, I'll make it 10. 8 plus 6 is the same as 
a 10 frame plus 4 more, that made 14. So if I put a 6 there, I'm just thinking, maybe I'll write it in pencil light, lightly so I could erase. That made 14. That used my 6 of the choice numbers they gave me. Is 14 the same as 8 plus 10? Those are my only other two numbers I'm allowed to use. No. 8 plus 6 made 10 plus 4. They didn't say I could write a 4. So 6 is not the right number to put there. That didn't work at all. Let me try a different number there. Let me try putting an 8 there. So I'm going to put, if I want to do 8, I'm just thinking that's another number. We tried 6. I'll try 8. 8 plus 8. So I have my 8 in my 10 frame. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on the outside. So I'm trying an 8 to see if it will work. That used my 8. So if I don't use an 8, I have a 10 and a 6 left. Let me make a 10 down here. I'll change my 8 to fill my 10 frame. Now I have a filled 10 frame and 6 on the outside. That made 16. A 10 and 6 is 16. Hey, now my 10 frame has a group of 10 and a group of 6. So that works. So I would say 10 plus 6 is the same as 8 plus 8. I could add a group. I could add 8 plus 8 to make 16. And if you know your addition doubles, that's a doubles fact too. 8 and 8 made 16. That used my 8. 10 plus 6 is the same thing. 10 plus 6 makes 16. I showed it on my 10 frame as well. I filled an 8 plus 8, 8 red, 8 yellow, changed to 10, a filled 10 frame, and 6 on the outside, 16. That 10 plus 6 has the same sum as 8 plus 8. That's really a tricky way of thinking because you have to try different things. It's not something you can look at and know. You have to think, what if it's the 6? What if it's the 8? What if I put the 8 here and the 6 here? What if I put the 10 here? And you just have to try. The bottom one is just like we've been doing. It'll be easy for you to do. The model, that just means a picture, shows 7 plus 4 equals 11. They made 7 and 4 on the outside. And if you count it all, you'd find there were 11. It says write the 10 fact that has the same sum. Can you think how to do that? What are you going to do? I want a 10 fact. That means fill my 10 frame. I need one, two, three yellow ones to fill my 10 frame. So I'm going to take these three yellow ones and instead put them up in my 10 frame. I'm changing the model. I'm changing the picture to show that to help you see that, what the problem says you have to do is write the 10 fact. It's up to you whether or not you draw it like I did. But it helps me to see it so I know why I'm drawing, writing the numbers I'm writing. The 10 fact I made now is a t filled 10 frame, the number 10, plus 1 on the ex outside, 1 extra. 10 plus 1 is an easy fact for me. I know 11. So now, Here's the 10 fact that has the same sum as 7 plus 4. They both have a sum or answer of 11. Now it's time for you to do this for homework. Remember, we did those other pages together, and we did them slowly so that you can look back to know what we did on those pages to help you when you are trying to do your homework by yourself. The first problems, solving 5 plus 7 and 9 plus 5, it says use your red and yellow counters and your 10 frame to show both add-ins. 
draw to make a 10, then write the new fact. So you're going to do what we did on the first page. Remember when we put our counters there, what we did to solve these problems? That's what you're going to do here. You're going to use your 10 frame, use your counters, and then you're going to draw your red and yellow circles, your red and yellow counters, and write the new fact that you made once you filled your 10 frame. You'll, so you'll be drawing counters over here with your red and yellow crayons, writing the new fact you made when you filled your 10 frame, and writing that whole fact with a sum and the same sum over here. You'll do that for that problem number one and problem number two. Look back on page 174 if you don't remember how to do it. 10 plus 6 has the same sum as 7 plus something. Well, that's like what we just did on this tricky one. Here it says 10 plus 6 has the same sum as blank plus 8. You're going to think of it the same way. Show 10 plus 6 on your 10 frame and then change it so there's a group of 7 and figure out how many are in the other group. So it's not exactly like this problem, but like this problem, you're going to want to start by filling your 10 frame. On this one, use pictures or words to explain how to make a 10 to solve 5 plus 7. When it says use pictures and words, that means I can't just write the addition sentence with the answer. I can't just write the answer. I need to explain it. How are you going to explain adding 5 plus 7? What's a good way? Well, if you would solve it using a 10 frame, you could draw the 10 frame with the red and yellow counters, and that could show how red and yellow counters and then mark it to show how you fill the 10 frame and your new fact. That would be a good way to show that. The back is work we've done before. This looks like we've, what we've been doing today. What sum does this model show? They've got a 10 frame and extra. Write the fact. What addition sentence does this model show? Again, the counters in 10 frame here will tell you what to write for that fact. What is the sum of 4 plus 6? You know what the word sum means. There are two big red flowers, two big flowers, and four small flowers. How many flowers are there? You're just going to solve that math problem. Write your addition or subtraction number sentence here and your answer. You'll be able to do that. Remember, we already did work like this on the previous pages. Turn back to this page to see how to create a new 10 fact. And on this page, there's a 10 plus 6, or these also can help you solve the ones where you start with a 10 fact and you have to change it to another fact. Okay? That's what you're going to do today. Now, when you're done doing your math, just like always, have your grown-up helper take a picture of each page to send to your teacher. But now, because we're back in school, the next day you come to school, you'll bring your math book back. It goes back and forth every day. And when you bring your math book back, your teacher might want to see the pages in your book. So don't tear your pages out. Those pages have to go back and forth. Your workbook goes back and forth every day so your teacher can see it. So again, take a picture of your work when you're done, then send that to your teacher on Seesaw. Then put your math book back in your red homework folder or back in your toolkit to bring to school with you the next day you come. This work will take some time. You might not want to do your math work all at once today. You might want to do a couple pages, take a break, and then do the next couple because it takes some thinking, doesn't it? I'm sorry, we only have two for homework. But if you didn't finish the pages with me, do finish those first and then do the other ones. It takes some thinking, but you can do it. And remember to look back to the pages we've already done to help remind you. I know you can do it. You're very smart kids, and you've been doing excellent work so far. Thank you.